What you see in front of you is the entire Irix Cine lineup minus the 11 millimeter fisheye lens. While I do have a video coming up comparing all of the lenses and how they work together, today I wanna to talk about the middle child. videos on all of these other four lenses. Uh, if you want to check them out, I'll leave a playlist link somewhere around here. Go far enough out of frame. Also, the beam is creeping. What happened to my camera? That's better, right? Yeah. So anyways, this lens feels amazing in the hand. It weighs about 2.5, 2.6 pounds, solid metal everywhere. It's got full weather resistance. So you can shoot out in the snow, the rain, not a problem. Of course, it's not waterproof, so don't go submerging it in water. I love the black and blue design aesthetics. We got a nice, huge front lens element. In my 21 millimeter video, we talked about how the much improved lens caps are actually flat now compared to the old round, so you don't have any problem storing them. It comes in all sorts of mounts. I'm using the EF mount, but PL, Sony, um, Nikon and whatever other ones are listed on their website. Also, this is my first time kind of using Irix's own uh, filters, which are now magnetic, which is really cool. So you can save yourself a lot of time by just magnetizing the filter to the front instead of having to screw on. Uh, and the magnet is incredibly strong and that is definitely not coming off. A couple extra hardware features I really like is like this rotating ring that's near the focus wheel. If you have a really thick like focus motor, it would clash right there. And so this ring has a uh, section of it that kind of concaves in. And so you can rotate that around to wherever your focus motor is. And now you have full clearance. Hello. And of course, one of the most important things is when it comes to the actual uh, dampening or tension on rotating the rings. When DZO sent me their 35 millimeter Vespid Cyber, that one felt uh, a little too loose. I found my, like it was nice if you had to do quick focus changes, cause here you do have a pretty wide focus throw. And if I had to go from one end of the spectrum to another, there's a lot of uh, clips where like one of my kids would be like running at the camera and you have to like, push or pull very quickly. Those are hard to do, but most of the time I'm shooting things that uh, require much slower camera movements. And so I actually really like the uh, stronger tension because I feel like it allows me to make much more accurate and fine movements. Whereas something on like the DZO lens, I found myself uh, missing focus because I would go too far or too short or I'd be just holding the camera and then my finger would slightly touch it and it would spin and, and throw focus off or here. I can kind of rest my hand here on the camera and like just my finger resting on it isn't enough to change the focus. Now the final thing about the uh, physicality of it, again, it is very heavy. I am shooting on the Pocket 6K Pro. Currently I have the tilt to half cage and the battery bank on the bottom. And it's still pretty front heavy. I just slap this on here. You can see that the camera doesn't like just sit and balance by itself. So when I'm holding it like this, it's still wanting to go forward. And so uh, gimbal setups or even just handheld know that this is it's a pretty beefy setup. I'm not gonna say it's like personal preference. It's just something to take note of. You'll get a good arm workout. 
So now the style of Irix lenses. Irix to me is the best lens set to own because it will give you the most versatility. The flares in my opinion are subtle, the bokeh looks nice, and you've got things like incredible lens breathing, which I've talked about in every Irix video. You just don't see that sort of stuff usually in the price points of this lens. Having shot plenty on Zeiss CP3s, uh, Rokinon Zines, Sigma Art, and Sigma Cine lenses, which most of those bat way higher price points than this. To say that these are a value is an understatement. And I need to point out, I guess at this point in the video, that uh, I'm not paid by Irix by any means. Yes, they sent me the 30 millimeter uh, to test out and stuff, but there is no money. There's no like script swapping in the background going on here. They basically just gave me the lens and said, test it out and give us your thoughts. They don't see the video before it goes out. I purchased the 45 millimeter by myself years ago at 100% retail. I used it to make a video before I ever had a contact. So yeah, I'm a genuine fan of Irix and I continue to use them uh, because I genuinely believe in the product. Now that that disclaimer is out of the way, I wanna use the back half of this video to talk about why you may go 30 millimeter over one of the other focal lengths since they all share the same features we just talked about. The reason that I titled this video and, and talk about like it's the perfect middle child is because that's exactly where the focal length kind of sits in the current lineup. And to be honest, I've almost found it replacing my 45 millimeter as my primary lens for portrait stuff. Using a 45 on a super 35 sensor, I'm bad at the conversions, but it's what, roughly like a 60 millimeter or something. And so it's pretty tight. To go out with just that one lens used to be pretty rough. Now I like very close up uh, subjects and kind of getting pretty intimate with the subject. So it was okay for me, but there were a lot of times I'm like, man, I wish I could get more, just a little bit more of the environment. Now my last Irix video, the 21 millimeter, you really get that feel of the environment. The 30 mil is like the perfect portrait lens for especially crop sensors where it is hyper-focused on the subject. You get really nice fall off on the background. It's a T1.5 still, but you get just enough of a taste of the environment where it still feels like I could go out with just this lens, which I did for these couple outings that I shot most of the sample footage for. And it, it felt like enough. It felt like when I bring the footage back, I have both captured my subject and where the subject was. I get a lot of DMs from people asking which focal length they should buy. Usually it's their first, uh, you know, cine lens they're looking at. And I used to either say the 45 or the 15, and I could still make a pretty good argument for the 15. I think having a, a kind of wide angle is really good. If I were to start over, I think I'd go the 30. The 21 is a very close second. I, I, I gave it high regards in its review, and I still believe that to be true. I think having all of them, the 21 feels very unique to me, but I have always had a weak spot for a good 35 millimeter. And so being a 30 on a crop sensor feels closer to that 35 on a full frame. And I truly did not realize how perfect of a focal length it feels to me as someone who likes to shoot portrait stuff more. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it down in the comments below. Which focal length do you like? Have you checked out Irix? Are you a fan of other brands? Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm working on a video that compares all of the lenses together. Because I think if you guys are going to invest the money into a whole lens set, you should know that for professional work and narrative work, you are going to get well color matching. How are you going to need to adjust your lighting as all of the T-stops aren't the same across the lineup? And so I'm gonna be doing a behind the scenes video while I'm shooting a narrative short film for an upcoming competition that shows how all of the different focal lengths work together. So make sure you're subscribed for that. Thanks so much for watching guys. See you in the next video.